Hello everyone, Antonio back from DronePros.com and today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new product. Actually, we're really excited to show you guys uh, today's video because this is actually something that's brand new. It's something that it's been out, the word has been out, pictures have leaked out. Um, very, very few people uh, have actually done a video on it. Um, RC Model Reviews, I believe he did a video on it. I'm not sure, I may be wrong on that, but I believe I recall seeing him do a video on it. But um, yeah, so this here is a new FR Sky um, Horus radio, so you can see here. Um, it's a really nice radio. Uh, in today's video, we're just kind of, kind of, kind of do a quick look at it, uh, our thoughts about it, what we think about it here right out of the box. Um, later on, we are going to have a few more series of videos showing you how to use it. Like I said, today is just initial thoughts. We have gotten one flight using this radio. Um, we received this radio in our hands probably about an hour ago. Uh, we quickly went through it, uh, bound it, flew it, and uh, got to really feel the gimbals. And uh, the reason we did that, we want to give you guys um, as well our thoughts on, on the radio, what we think. Um, is it practical? Is it better? Is it worse? You know, whatever the case is. So starting off with the case, the case is actually really, really, really nice. It's actually a very durable case. I probably wouldn't have any, I mean, I would have a problem dropping this one here. Um, but if by accident I were to drop this case, I honestly wouldn't worry that much about the radio. Um, I have to give it to um, FR Sky. They really, really did a nice job on providing a really, really nice case with this radio. Um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. This is the front of it here. And right here, you can see the, the back of it, um, the bottom, I mean, not too fancy. But like I said, the overall feel of the case, it's very, very nice. It has uh, some weight to it, so I, I can tell it's made from some very good materials out there. It looks to be like aluminum. But um, getting into the radio, you can see here, um, this is the radio. This is how, when you open it, how it comes. You have your little keys to lock your radio. Make sure no one steals it. I mean, I guess you could open it if you really wanted to. Um, you got a charger here. The charger from the looks of it, um, don't quote me on this, but I believe this looks to be the same exact charger that comes with the, um, the previous Tran is here. Um, like I said, I'm not 100% sure on that, but it looks to be the same. They also provide you a nice, oh wow, a really nice uh, leather and, and really nice finish here on the uh, strap. This is actually something you are going to kind of need. I'll get to that a little bit later and um, let you know why you are going to kind of need a uh, strap with this radio. So now here the most important thing and the nicest thing of when you open this thing, you're quickly greeted by the beautiful uh, Horus radio. So let me get that out. So we're going to set that down here. Uh, we got instruction manuals. I mean, who needs instruction manuals? We never read them anyways. Um, no, just kidding. You guys should always read your instruction manual, especially on a radio. Um, teaches you a lot of features. Um, although the manual just seems like two pieces of paper. So I really don't think it's a uh, full manual. I think it's just a quick intro of it. So this here is the uh, radio itself, guys. Um, Weight-wise, it does have, let me... It is for sure heavier than the uh, Tranus Plus we have here. I wouldn't say double the weight, but it is heavier. We also have a, a Spectrum DX9 here. I'd say both these weigh about the same. So this one here clearly is uh, heavier than both of them. Uh, the feel of the unit, I will say the gimbals, comparing the two, these actually feel a lot freer, if that's even a word. Um, the springs, I don't really feel like a, a, a springiness to them. Comparing them to the DX9. Yeah, the DX9 has actually some really, really nice gimbals. I would say, I am, I, I'm actually digging the DX9 gimbals here more than, than the gimbals on there. But the gimbals are improved from what I personally can feel compared to the, uh, uh, the Tyrannus Plus I have here. So um, really nice job on the gimbals. It does look like it's machined. The whole, I believe this whole face here is aluminum. This here, it's probably, this kind of feels like plastic. The face feels like aluminum. I really like the nice grips it has here. 
Um, a lot of switches, not too many switches going on. The layout on the switch, I will say it does feel very natural when I'm grabbing the radio. You know, the switches are just right there with my index finger. It doesn't really take a lot to reach um, and get them. The little sliders down here, very natural feel. I will give it to um, FR Sky on that. The, the placement on the switches and these little dials on the bottom, it's a very, very natural feel. Um, the dials, everything, right off the bat, I was quickly able to feel that the switches on this thing feel at least three times better than they do on this one here. These kind of feel like whatever switches, these feel like really nice. They have a nice sound to them when you do um, hit them. Um, you got a few menu buttons right here. Uh, more here, I'll get into that here a little bit later. And a really nice thing is how they did the on and off switch. It's not your standard, just push up and down. You open this here, the switch is below. Press that, you can see here. Welcome to Horus. Welcome to Horus, we're quickly uh, greeted there. Morning. Press enter. We've actually, a really nice thing, you can actually load a picture. So let's say um, you can take a picture of your model with your phone, you can load it and it, it, the picture, the resolution on there is absolutely beautiful. We have, I don't know if you can see it there, we have an MXP200B uh, Bapu edition there and the picture looks beautiful. It almost looks like I'm looking at my phone. So I will say for sure the screen quality on this thing is really, really nice. Um, the size of this screen is, is beautiful. On this specific model here we have in our hands, and like I said, this here guys is a pre-production. Everything I'm saying here in this video, you are gonna see changes to it. Don't just watch the video and say, oh, you know, it didn't have what I was looking for. There's a lot of changes. This specific model we have in front of us, it's not touchscreen, um, but from what I heard, the actual final production is gonna be touchscreen, just this specific model is not uh, touchscreen. So, um, yeah, but um, the overall look of, of the monitor, I really like it. I think it's a really nice size. Um, for you guys that have used Futaba in the past, um, the model selection is very almost identical to Futaba. If you want to go in the systems menu, you press left. That takes you to the systems menu. If you want to go to the model menu where you would change like uh, servo input, uh, servo reversing, expo, so on, uh, so on and so forth, you'd click on model. That takes you to that menu. And um, then if you want to go into the telemetry, you hit the right and it show you all the telemetry and then you got a return here on the bottom. So I will say the menu layout is very much so like a Futaba. I'm gonna go here in the model. It has a little, since this model here isn't touchscreen, I believe, like I said, the final production will be. To scroll through this is very easy. The scrolling actually feels very nice, very uh, live feel. It feels like if I move it one click, it moves one here. I'm not tinkering with it. So I really like that. Another thing I really like is FR Sky's English, as far as radio English, got a lot better. Um, before, especially guys that have been in RC for a long time, like myself, we've used a lot of radios. We're used to dual rate, we're used to expo, endpoint, a lot of that terminology. Uh, with the previous Tyrannus, it did not have that. It, they were named a lot more differently. It was a lot more hard to navigate. I will say their menus got a lot better. I do like the layout of it. Now, after flying this radio, um, I will tell you guys, uh, you know, keeping this review, I guess if you want to call it, as honest as I can, I really don't see myself flying with this radio. Um, I really believe FR Sky, they did a beautiful job on the radio. Everything's nicely done. But I believe, especially you guys that, that have done RC for a while, you know very well that this style radio is what we call a tray radio, I guess, in the industry. And it's more of a European radio. It's something that in Europe it's used a lot. You see a lot of guys flying with big old neck straps, big old trays. Um, here in the US market, I mean, you know, it is cool, it is nice, it's beautiful, I'll give it to them there, but I believe they should have done, they could have done a lot more with this style of radio. Um, and it's what we've been come to used to here in the US market. This for sure looks like it, it's a radio that's, that's, you know, for the European market. I wouldn't call this radio a copy of the Jetty by any means. Um, Jetty kind of did a little bit of a hybrid from a standard radio and a European radio. It's not too wide. Um, I will say they, they did, it's a very unique radio. I don't think they copied anyone. Um, you know, a lot of people may think it's a copy of the Jetty just because of the layout. But as I mentioned earlier, this style layout is what I call a European style layout. And if you do some online research, you'll quickly see that in Europe, uh, this style radio is very, very popular. Um, Spectrum actually makes, I believe it's a 10, it's a Spectrum 10 or like 10S radio. 
Um, you really don't see it here in the USA, but in Europe, uh, you see it a lot. That's almost all anybody flies. So, um, yeah, I, I, I flew with it. I did not use a strap and it, it really felt different. You know, a lot of that might have to do because it's a different radio. I'm going to have to get used to the feel of it. The gimbals have to reach out. It, it's, it just, I don't know. It, it doesn't feel that comfortable, you know, between these two radios, I can easily switch between them and have no issues whatsoever. Uh, but just the style of this radio, like I said, I really don't see myself buying it. Um, obviously we have it here and, and, and we, we have the privilege, privilege of reviewing it, but, um, yeah, uh, you kind of really do need the neck strap after flying it. Uh, I feel the neck strap is needed and it just seems like a little bit too much. Um, you know, I'm not trying to put FR sky down by any means. I, I really love what they did. I, I think they did a really, really nice thing there. I'd really love for them to do something similar on this style of radio. I think it'd go a lot more. Um, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for today. We, like I said, we are going to have more videos um, going through the menus, showing how the binding procedure is, showing a really nice thing actually that I'm not going to get into here in this part of the video is the speaker. The speaker on this thing is at least five times better than the speaker on this. Um, it's something we're going to get into a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down in the comment box below. If you want to check out um, our wide selection of ARF units, be sure to check them out at www.dronepros.com. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Till next time.